Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Brother Joe. And I'm just Joe, no title. And I'm so glad that you joined me for the Lord's Word of God today. And today we're going to learn a little bit more about Jesus. And so if you brought your Bibles today, please turn to the book of Colossians chapter 1. Now reading verse 15, it says about Jesus. He is in the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. So brothers and sisters, he was here in existence. He's part of God the Father and the Holy Spirit. He's second in the Trinity. And all things were created for him and by him. Amen? Amen. So now, the next passage we'll read is in the book of Matthew, chapter 17, and we'll start reading in verse 1. Now after six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, led them up on a high mountain by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun. And his clothes became as white as the light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, talking with him. Then Peter answered and said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, let us make three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. And while he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And suddenly a voice came out of the cloud, saying, this is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear him! Exclamation mark. Now what you have here is an amazing event. They see Jesus in his glory. And Moses and Elijah come from heaven to speak to Jesus. But here Peter wants to put Jesus equal with Elijah and Moses by making a tabernacle for all of them. And God makes it clear, crystal clear, that Jesus is to be heard, not them. And that Jesus is over all creation, all created, whether they're angels, apostles, or prophets, he is above all names. Amen? Amen. Remember, he tells Philip, if you have seen me, you have seen God. You understand? Jesus is part of God. And we need to look at him on that side of the coin. We don't want to anger God. Amen? Amen. So in the book of Isaiah, chapter 37, what happens is, is there's a king of Assyria, and he has blasphemed God. Almighty. God is not happy. And so King Hezekiah prays to God earnestly to take care of the problem, and he does. And so we'll read in verse 36 to see what God does. Then the angel of the Lord went out and killed in the camp of the Assyrians 185,000. And when the people arose early in the morning, there were the corpses all dead. You understand? 185,000 men of the Assyrians went to bed and they didn't wake up. They were dead. That should put the fear of God in anyone. Right? If you blaspheme God, God will take vengeance. You have angered God. You don't want to do that, brothers and sisters. So we need to be aware who God is. Turn with me to the book of Luke, chapter 12, and we'll read what Jesus says in verse 4 and 5. And I say to you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body, and after that, no more that they can do. But I will show you whom you should fear. Fear him who, after he is killed, 
has power to cast into hell. Yes, I say to you, fear him. You understand? In Revelation, it tells us that Jesus has two keys. The keys to death and the keys to hell. And he did the ultimate sacrifice, brothers and sisters, for you and me. Don't disrespect our Lord and Savior by serving yourself instead of serving him. Amen? Amen. Turn to the book of Philippians, chapter 2, and we read verse 12. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Brothers and sisters, we need to fear God. God told the Israelites, if you fear me and obey me, all will be well with you and your children but they didn't. And so God sent his only begotten son to die on a cross for us and all that were ever born. If we would accept Jesus as our savior and live for him, pleasing God and doing his will. And so fear and trembling, that's real fear. And if you fear God, You'll do whatever he says. When Abraham goes to sacrifice Isaac, and God Almighty stops him, the words out of God's mouth are, Now I know you fear me. Yes. So don't let anybody deceive you thinking that the word fear just means reverence, that you give respect. We give respect to all our elders, amen, amen. But we don't fear them. We fear God and we give them respect, right? Amen. Let's turn to 2 Timothy chapter 4, reading verse 3. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itchy ears, They will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth. You understand? That's why there's so much sin in the world today. Because there's deceivers out there, but the people want to hear that they don't have to obey God. They don't have to practice righteousness. They want to hear those words. But the scripture says that if the blind lead the blind, they both fall in the ditch. You understand? So don't be the blind person listening to the false teachers. We are here to live for our Lord and Savior by pleasing God and doing His will. And it is not His will that we continue to sin, but to practice righteousness. One more. Please turn with me to the book of 1 Peter, reading chapter 3, verse 12. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. So, brothers and sisters, the word of God is true and faithful. And if you're practicing righteousness, God is hearing your prayers And he will answer your prayers with all your needs. Amen.